Hi everyone. Um, for those of you who saw the video, uh, the tutorial on how to do the double envelope pocket, um, I had given some measurements and it created this size. After I got it done and I was going to put it in my signature, I realized I actually made it too big. So this is the width. It would stick out quite a ways from my signature. So I opted not to use this and I redid one for the signature, but that's not what I'm going to show you. I, I got this far and I really loved the way it turned out and yeah, I didn't do the back or anything yet, but I thought, okay, well, what am I going to do with this? Because it won't fit in any of my journals. I always make them the same size. And I just thought, you know, it would be a really cute cover. So I'm going to cut down some tea stain paper and I'm going to make this into a notebook. So what I thought I would do is start off by uh, covering this. I want to seal it because I want it to be completely usable and not too um, flimsy. It has quite a few layers of paper on there so you know I feel like the cover will be good but I do want to kind of seal it up. So I'm going to do that first and then I'm going to let it dry and I'll come back with another video but um, in the meantime, I will do this. Now, I'm using the Liquitex Professional Gloss Medium and Varnish. I love this stuff. It enhances color and it does seal. It just is a really good product. It's completely matte, so depending on um, how you apply it, you'll get a different finish. Now, I usually go over my spots kind of in smaller areas, uh, spread it out, and then I go back while it's still a little bit damp, and I pounce over the top of it. And that's because I don't like brush strokes. Um, if you don't mind, then, you know, you can just go ahead and brush it on. I'm using just an old flat, flat edge brush that seems to work well for me and if I use it on the flat side then you know you get a nice a nice finish um, if you use this side you're gonna get smaller tight dots and it it reminds me of canvas when I see this all done I like the look personally I'll telephoto in for you so it might be a little bit easier for you to see. I think the lighting's good. I can't see it very well, but <laughs> so let's hope for the best. It does dry pretty quick, so you don't want to do big areas or you're going to end up with a lot of brush strokes. So as you can see, I brush it on first. Lay your brush flat if you can. You don't want a huge buildup with this particular product. Uh, the thicker it is, the milkier it is. So you don't get that nice clear and you don't get the colors popping as well as they might. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this off. And I'll pause the video here and when I come back then we'll work on um, I just want to show how to um, adhere your papers for smaller projects I've had a lot of requests to uh, show how I put my books together uh, this won't be exactly but the principle is the same so it might give you some options on uh, you know how to sew things in there's all kinds of methods um, you know some people prefer using an awl to poke their holes. Some use a, a darning needle. Um, this particular project won't be really thick. Uh, when I'm doing my bigger books, I use uh, graph paper to figure out where I want my hole position. And I do have a video for that, so I will link that in the description box. I will link the video for the tutorial on how to make this uh, double envelope and uh, 
I didn't want to take that one down just because when I first introduced it, I basically said this can be made in any size. It's the only size measurements that I've given was for this size. So if you're looking to make it for uh, a journal, it's probably going to be too wide for you. So you might want to uh, cut it down a bit. So anyway, I'll pause here. I'll continue working and I'll be back. Thanks. Okay, guys, I'm back. Uh, and while I was gone, I did cut out my pages uh, that I want to sew into here. Um, I did, you know, finish it off with the uh, mixed media stuff. Oh, jeepers. Hang on a second. Uh, here it is. Liquitex. I don't know why I can't remember the name of this stuff. Gloss, medium, and varnish. Okay, I know I'm um, telephotoed in quite a bit. I hope that's... I think I'll telephoto out a little bit. Whoops, wrong way. Um, there we go. That's better. Okay. Now, I am going to put a piece of vellum because I had some left over. You can use, you know, scraps of paper, whatever. This was exactly the 27... 0.9 by, I forget, I'm trying to remember so, um, centimeters and stuff. So anyway, 8.5 by 11, guys. <laughs> uh, just simply cut it lengthwise in half. It fits perfectly in here. And you have space. Okay? So you have quite a bit of space. But, you know, I'm thinking, uh, I'm not quite sure what I want to do with the closure yet. But anyway, all, I, all I'm going to do is just simply fold these in half. Now, you know, if you wanted to go right to the end of your booklet, you can always um, add a piece to here as a fold-in, you know, it's up to you. There's a, like a million different things you can do with these little booklets. I've cut five sheets, so I get ten pages, because really, what's the point of three pages in a booklet, right? So that gives you 20 pages to write on, front and back. So if you're just new to you know, sewing in signatures. This is a great thing to use, actually, because it's pretty small. And then you can get, you know, used to using your pokey tool to make your holes. Um, there, people leave all kinds of comments uh, for me, telling me what they use and how they use it. So read the comments, you guys because, you know, there's a lot of great ideas out there. I don't have all the answers, <laughs> despite what you may think. <laughs> I do like to use my bone folder to crease that nicely. I also want to mention that this paper, the tracing paper that I used, I did spray it. I told you guys that. Um, and it took, I want to say, three days for the smell to go away. <laughs> I sprayed it outside so my room didn't, you know, have that really strong smell. However, um, the paper itself did. So... Keep that in mind. If you're planning on sending something to someone like immediately, then um, you might want to give it a few, <laughs> do it a few days in advance. So then I'm just going to nest all these together and double check to make sure that this is all going to fit. 
but you can use scraps off of stuff that you've been working on and you know you have a, a bit of paper left over. I'm still working on the book so I don't have any anything left over. Uh, and keep in mind too when you're nesting like this it is gonna you know you are gonna have pages sticking out. I don't mind that. If you don't like it you know you just gradually trim them off start in the center and you know take it down till you get to the front. Um, I, I'm not going to do that because I, I like it that way. And then if I have a long piece like this, this is longer than that, I'll put it on the outside because it shortens it. Now if I want, I can go ahead and trim that off. I may, I'm not sure. So this is going to fit really nice. It's going to be a nice little booklet. It definitely will need a closure of some kind. And like I said, I haven't figured that one out yet, but I will. And then I've made a little envelope that I plan on putting inside. Now, I always sew mine in. And typically I sew mine like this, but I'm not going to do that this time. I'm going to sew it in like this. So this is the part that's going to get sewn in. You can see that when I do mine, I fold this over and then I glue it down. Just gives a little bit more stability there. I am going to go ahead and ink all this. Um, because I didn't want it tea stained. And while we're talking, um, I told you how much I love this glass mat here. And when I was doing the tutorial for the metal tags, I used a lot of uh, the diamond glaze. And um, I was wondering, you know, how difficult that would be to get off again. Well, I have to say, I'm so impressed with this media mat because it just, I used the hand sanitizer and it worked beautifully. Um, and then, uh, it does leave a film, of course, so then I just use my spray bottle spray it off with the, and wipe it down with paper towel. And any bits that don't come off, um, it comes with a scraper it, when you buy the tool, the um, this thing here, I don't know what it's, straight edge I guess it's called, it's beveled straight edge. It comes with the scraper. I don't know where I put it. It's somewhere around here. I'm not, oh here it is. Honestly, this works better. And I got this at a kitchen store. It came with a wider one as well. Uh, it's much thinner in here and it comes with a little piece of very, very fine um, sanding paper to keep your edge sharp. And this works way better. This I find too thick. And it honestly, I mean, if you if you hold it straight up and down, then yeah, you can get stuff off, but you really have to work at it. So I'm going to use mine as a glue spreader instead, because it's the perfect size for that. And the only reason I have it is because that straight edge came with it. You know, that's what you get. So I'll find another use for it. Now, this size envelope is perfect because you can use your 6x6 paper pads. And heaven knows we all have a lot of those, don't we? <laughs> so another great size envelope for the 6x6. Or the 15x15. ink this part up here. And then down here. And then I'll go ahead and glue this little bit here. But I'm not going to glue the envelope because I have to sew it in first. I just want to get that down. You can cut it off or you can leave it. It's up to you. I like mine straight. I just find things, it's easier to get things in and out when you straighten it. Okay. So then, 
I am going to trim this tracing paper just a wee bit and I'm just going to tear it. Now, do I still want it on the outside? Nope, I think I will put it part way through. Here. Now at this point you can decide whether you want to do anything with the corners. I'm, I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to leave it plain. And then this will fit in the center like this and cover up some of my stitching. So now, I didn't mention this, but I added some of that um, sparkly tape, just dollar store tape. It is like a plastic, so I really struggled to get that to glue down. I ended up using my glue, um, I got it at the PE. They weren't there this year, so I couldn't get any more. But they do have a website that you can uh, order it from. I'll hold that up. It's, uh, I have to say, I like it better even than the Gorilla Glue. It really bonds, really, really bonds. But be careful because it really, really bonds. <laughs> you get on your fingers and you're kind of hooped. Um, okay, so let's get the, I have a little pad here, and because this is so small, I'm not going to be super picky um, about using graph paper and the whole nine yards. I usually use graph paper to uh, get my holes evenly spaced, but in this case, I'm just going to use a ruler and this ridge here is where I want my holes. I think I'm going to have to do it from the inside just to make sure I get it right on the ridge. So let's see. Um, I don't want too many holes. Let's do one up, one up at the top. And then I'll go one at the bottom. And then I'll go, if I go, let's see, one, two, three here. One, two, three here. One, two, three. Yeah, let's go one, two, three. Three and a half there. One, two, three and a half there. That should give me plenty. And I used a really small pokey tool. Your pokey tool should... Typically, you want to do it from the outside because when you do it from the inside, you get the hole poking up. But because this is covered, um, it, it doesn't show. So you're fine. But yeah, typically you want to go from the outside in. And if you use a small one, you can use quite thin um, string or whatever. Okay, now I'm going to just sort of line this up here where I want. Hopefully you're still in frame here. because there's only going to end up being two holes there. So one here, and one here. Okay. Can't quite see the other one. So I'll line that hole back up again. Close with that one. And Um, there it is. Okay. Now you can do them individually if you want to, but you know what? I'm not that picky. So what I'll do is just line that up along here where I can see my holes. Oh, I should have moved that up closer. 
I think I will. I'll poke that hole again here. Fortunately, I can't see the hole on the other side. Just to catch the edge of this paper better. Okay, so there, 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 and there. Okay. Now I'll take this one back out and I will poke the holes so I can really see them. And then I'm going to put that in the center. Like so. And you're going to crease it, hold it up like this, and then find your holes. Now I have to see it guys, so unfortunately you won't be able to. Okay, there we go. Now put this one back on the outside because that's where I had it. This is going to go in here like so. And then I need some thread. So I'll use this because it's in my junk pile. Uh, I need a needle. I like to use a nice thin needle if I can. The problem sometimes is that it's difficult to get your... I'm using embroidery floss. So, I use one of these. I'm sure you guys have seen these. These are needle guides. And you put it through your needle eye. Now I open it a bit so that I can get my floss through. Okay. And then Hold the very end. Squeeze that together and hold on to it nice and close. Otherwise, you risk, hopefully I don't do it, you risk, oh, there we go, the chance of breaking this uh, wire. It's very, very, very thin wire. So if you hold it back here and try and pull, you'll, you'll break your wire. Okay. And then just slip it out again. And I usually start in the center. And the first thing I do is get all the pages on the needle. Just drop them on your needle. And we're just going to do a pamphlet stitch, nice and simple can't really do my the one that I like doing the most because there's not enough spine. Everybody does this a wee bit different. You just have to find what works for you. I always liken it to if, if you happen to be a crocheter or a knitter, everybody holds their needles in a different way. And until you find what's comfortable for you, you're going to just sort of fumble along until you get it. And then line up your hole on your cover. Now when I can't get it through, I use flat flat pliers to give me a hand there, you know? Okay, then you're going to pull your thread. You want to leave a tail because you have to tie it off. Okay. Then, hard part <laughs> is finding this hole because I can't see any holes. So, what I'll have to do 
is do it from... Wow, that's a super teeny tiny hole. I think it's right there. Yeah, there it is. Okay. And then again, you're just going to drop your papers on your needle. Just make sure you give yourself enough tail that you don't pull pull it off, right? And you lose all your papers. <laughs> I've done that. fast forward this you guys I mean this is boring hear my stomach growling, just ignore it. <laughs> so I'm pretty excited. I think uh, we're going to get rid of the time change. I think this might be the last year that we have to change our clocks. That would be awesome. Okie dokie. You get it all through. All right, then we're going to go down this hole if I can find it. I have to turn this. Sorry, guys, I can't see. I hope you guys can see okay. I mean, really not rocket science. It's just patience is what it takes. All right. Now, you want to turn it over and you're going to go back into this hole. And hopefully things line up good enough for it to just go right through. Maybe not. Okay, where are you? Ah, come on. If you can't find it, you have to do it one at a time. Which really ticks me off when that happens, but sometimes it does. And you just keep flipping them. When you see the metal of your needle, then flip the next one over. There we go. That wasn't that bad. Okay. And then you're going to go down this hole. I want to double check to make sure that's tight, guys. Okay. That part's not tight. There we go. So straighten this, like tighten it up to your right, and then put your needle to the left of it. And then you're less likely to catch your thread, which can be a bit of a pain. Your needle goes, see, like that. I don't want my needle going through the thread. When you use the pliers, make sure you put them low or you stand a chance of breaking your needle. Okay, last one. There's a hole here. And I'm going to open it up 
so that I can see the holes there. And flip those. There we go. Okay, you're going to go down one more hole. Actually, no, you're not. You're done. You're done. Okay, so then you want to take your needle and go underneath that stitch here. Pull it as tight without ripping it. And then tie it off. Don't tie it too, too, too tight or it will poke through the hole. And then I tie it again. And that one you can tie nice and tight. Okay, then cut your threads off. These scissors are terrible for that. Okay. I usually flatten that out as much as possible. Now this is this way. So now what you want to do is take your sides, take this part here, let me put my needle away and get this out of my way. Okay. <laughs> Buttons everywhere. Because <laughs> I want to show you something else. All right. So if you take your glue and run it on the inside of your triangle, not too close. And then on the outside of this one, I do it right on the edge of this one. Just like to make doubly sure that my I've got enough glue to hold my envelope closed. And then flatten that out as best you can. And then squeeze your glue out that way. Now, if you've been heavy-handed, you can always put a piece, a piece of parchment paper inside until your glue dries, and then you're guaranteed that your envelope won't glue shut. So there's your booklet. I know it's really poofy, right? It definitely needs a closure. Now, I could do something like just um, one of my little clips here. Oh. Uh, I actually really like this clip. I think it's cool. And then you can tie some ribbon on it if you want. Or just simply do it like that. You know, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to add some little metal edges just to keep it from getting torn. And if you add a clip, then bonus, because whatever you've put in here, like you could put your receipts in here, you know, they won't, you won't lose them. Or you can put them in the envelope part. You can go ahead and stamp, decorate, do whatever you want. These are just so fun and practical, which you know, guys, that's me. I like being practical. Anyway, that's that. Okay. So then, um, somebody had said, because I had mentioned when I did these little tags, I have one hidden back here. Here's that one that I worked on, and I added some uh, cheesecloth underneath there so you get a bit of texturing. Uh, I did trim off some of this eyelash trim. It was super long. So that's the one I did. But then I had mentioned that, yeah, you could just, you know, layer a bunch of uh, ribbon and stuff. So I was fooling around and um, I thought, you know, I'll, I had promised one of my subscribers that I'd show it. Where the heck did my, oh, there it is, my ribbon. I have this trim with these little tassels and I thought that would be really cute 
doing that. But before I do anything, I want to take my Sharpie, and I am going to do black on this one. And I just color the silver because I really, really dislike silver. But this isn't a step that's necessary to your design because if you like silver, then just leave it. But I also thought the black might um, highlight, you know? Okay, I'm going to telephoto in again because this is small work. Now when I did the tutorial I said you can use your heat gun to dry and yes you can just be careful because it really gets hot and I don't think anybody's mentioned in any of the videos that I've watched for the media mat um, I've seen a few of them now but nobody's mentioned yes you can use the heat gun on here but it heats the glass so you really need to be careful you're not going to burn yourself you know how I know that? <laughs> yes, indeed. It doesn't take much for this. You just want to do a quick little dry. I really think you should design that tool with the cold button as well. I think that would be amazing. I've got a blow dryer that does that. It's got a button you hold down when you want to set your curl. Okay, and then I'm just going to do the back as well. tedious but I think it makes a difference. So I'd been approached by a company who wanted me to um, review one of their products but it was on adult paint by number canvases which were beautiful I have to say and they do custom as well. So you can send them a photo and they'll make a they'll make a canvas with num paint by numbers on it for you. I have no idea the cost or anything like that. And I said, you know what? I mean, <laughs> one, I don't think I could read the numbers on the canvas because they were pretty teeny tiny. Uh, two, I do not have the time for that. Although I really want to learn how to paint, I just don't have the time. So then they said, well, how about doing a giveaway on your channel for one? And I thought, you know, I don't have the time for that either. <laughs> it's just, yeah, a lot of work, you know. Now, I'm going to use Diamond Glaze. This is Judikins Diamond Glaze. And I think, I don't know. I just think that if I do the Diamond Glaze on here, now you're playing with me, so... I'm not sure how this is actually going to work, but I'm going to add this on the bottom. Not the whole thing, not yet. I'll go back and do that, but I want to lay some of this trim. And what can I use where I'm not getting, oh, I'll use this. I don't want this glue all over my fingers. But I want it to saturate into the cotton. And then that should hold it. This will take quite a while to dry, of course. All right. So we got that. And then I have this. And I have this piece. I really love this piece. 
I lay that there and lay this here. I have loads of buttons too that I pulled out. I have this sparkly one. I don't know if that would sit on there. I know that you could use a glue gun. I personally do not like glue guns. I find after a while the glue becomes brittle and then it just cracks off. I don't think I'll use that one. Flat buttons work the best, obviously. I have this cute little heart one. That gives me my three, but before I do that, I've got some cheesecloth here. Now, cheesecloth is nice and holy, so I'll be able to get a little thread through here. Yeah, I think I'm going to put that cheesecloth there. And then I think I'm... Mm, I don't think I'm going to use a diamond glaze. I'm going to use this one. It works well with acrylic and metal. So I'll try that. Stick that down there. Ah, don't get it on me. Alright, and oh, I did get it on me, see? I told you. <laughs> it's very sticky. This is a shell button. It's really pretty. Ah, did it again. Spend half my day picking glue off my finger. Um, I think I'm going to cut this. Find my Tim Holt scissors. Oh, buried them. Yeah, let's... Well, that's kind of pretty. But do I want it right there? I don't know. Hey, stop that. Uh, maybe we can have a piece out here too. Put that there. Yeah, that'd be pretty. Okay. I'm trying not to overthink things. I, I do that. I'm really bad about doing that. I'm trying not to overthink it. Okay, so that will work well with the uh, pearls. dear. Get off me. Alright, and then <laughs> it's sticking to me. <laughs> Where'd my needle go? Oh, that didn't work. Okay. Uh, well, let's try putting it right on here. I don't know. Ah, get off me. That might not work at all, you guys. It's very liquidy, so it's now made the, yeah, it's not going to work. The flower really hard. So let's try a different glue. Let's try the diamond glaze, see what happens. 
Because at least it will be puddly, which is what I want. Yeah, that stays there. I actually like what the um, glue made. It made this flower hard, which is cool. Okay. All right, so there's your tag. You can still find the hole. And then I've got the little strings of cotton. You can use whatever you want, but I'm going to use this uh, to string it up. I'm just going to let that set. And I wanted to show you one more. And I also wanted to show you, you can use buttons with the shank. If you use your Tim Holtz scissors, you can simply cut that off. They are strong enough to cut them off. I'm just not strong enough to cut them off. There it is. So that flattens it a bit more. I did that on this one. I love this button. It's so pretty. Uh, okay, so it's another tag. Oh, I better put that in. I don't know why I do this. I mean, if you're going to cover it that much, it's not going to show, but just in case you don't. You know, if you're putting it hanging on something and it keeps spinning, I'll show you what I did with the other one. If I can find it. Yeah, here it is. Okay, so there's the, whoops, wrong way. There's uh, the top of it, and then if it flips over, I just added a flower onto that. So you can do that if you like. And I suggest if you plan on doing that, do the flower first because it'll be flat. And then if you're doing it after you've dimensionalized your tag, it's going to be difficult to work on the other side. I'm not going to bother putting anything on there, but um, I do have this piece left. So I want to use that up. Not sure how yet. And I do have loads of eyelash trim which I can maybe add to the bottom of that somewhere and then I have cheesecloth somewhere I love texturizing things it's just a great way to use up little bits and pieces that you have that are so pretty you just don't want to throw them out. <laughs> like that. And then I really want to use this rose. Or I might have smaller ones. Let's see. Yes, you guys, I have loads and loads and loads of flowers. Oh, that's pretty. I wonder, maybe, or maybe that. I used to do a lot of altering, you know, boxes and picture frames and different things like that. So I have a mega amount, okay, this is really annoying me, of flowers. And, you know, I spent a lot of money on them, but they're really not good for journals because uh, they're very dimensional, obviously. But for a tag that's going to hang outside your book, it might just be the thing, right? Let's see which one I like. This one's a little flatter.
Oh, that is so cute. But if you're going to do that, you need three. Let's see. I have... Not color. Mm, that's really pretty. There we go. Something like that. Okay, let's get this stuff out of the way. Okay, we're going to figure this out. Let's go for it. Okay. And as you can see, I'm not inking the edge. I think this one's going to be covered up enough that I don't need to. Now. fingers. sakes get off me. And there goes my stomach. Mm, not sure that's gonna work. Let's get some underneath on the metal. If I put it on the metal, that might just work. And not my fingers. Oh, goodness. Okay. Double check where my hole is. It's up here. So now, I'm not going to use that one. that off. And I'm going to use the diamond glaze. Fill that up. There's my hole. Keep your hole at the top. And put that one there. And a little 
white one. And I'm going to fill this up. Cover the button too. Okay. So I'll telephoto in. I can't really move it and pick it up because it's loaded with glue. Oh, I should shut that light off, sorry. There, that's better. Okay, so there's another one. I don't know what I did. Oh, there's the other one. There's the other. They're just fun, right? Oh. Widen out a little bit. There you go. So, um, you know, just string them up. You can put them on, you know, your edges of your books or on a bookmark like I do. Um, you know, there's all kinds of uses for them and I don't know, they're just different. They're just fun. Um, I could put a little something in the middle of that flower too. <laughs> anyway, go ahead and play. Have some fun. Uh, I think that's all I was going to show you today. Um, I am working on vellum. I uh, just ordered some vellum, but I had this little vellum envelope and I was experimenting with glue because you can see through vellum, right? And I have vellum tape runner, but yeah, it's a pain to use. It just separates all the time. It does hold very well, but it's difficult to use. Anyway, I used the Tombow um, liquid glue. And it comes with a pen tip, this one, which is why I used it. Now, I would use it again, but I think the next time I would probably spread it with my finger and because you can see where, you know, it didn't adhere. I mean, yeah. Anyway, I was going to practice with um, doing something with this and then inking it up and, you know, doing something different with it. I don't know, but you'll see it in the, the next craft along video, which hopefully I'll be able to start working on now. I think I'm tutorialed out for a little bit, um, but you guys keep giving me some great ideas, so <laughs> please stop. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I need to work on this, uh, really need to work on this book, and uh, I've been asked to do more uh, flip throughs of it so that they can see my process and uh, Anyway, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens with that. So, thanks for watching this video. Please give me a thumbs up if you like it. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and click the little bell. That way you'll get notifications every time I upload a video. Thanks for watching, you guys. Have a wonderful day. Bye.